Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. Now, I'm not sure if this is a premiere or not. Y'all give me one second. Give me one second here. Give my, my wife birthday party situated. One second here. Now, also, thank you so much to everybody who has joined in the YouTube investment opportunity, the channel. And the link should be in the description. If I forgot it, then you'll see it in the description of maybe the last video. But check it out. Check out the deadline. Check out all the regulations. This is SEC regulated. So all the information is there. Now, I wanted to come and talk about this P. Diddy situation just because, I, honestly, I didn't want to talk about it. it because sometimes I, I don't like I don't like speaking on things that are just super duper obvious and things that don't necessarily deal with directly the body of christ but with this p diddy situation it is a visual of what we've been talking about in the little ugly series this is the spirit of little ugly on steroids this is the spirit of little ugly with tens of millions of dollars and no real accountability now, as you look at the press conference that they had yesterday where they talked about all the stuff that P. Diddy did, which I won't use all those words and terminology in here because I don't want to mess up my video. But when you see all of that, you will see. You will see that it, it got bad but that is what lust does when you feed that lust and so the same thing what i'm talking about if you've ever met a man with the spirit of little ugly that you have to watch the series go to the playlist on my page watch the series the the video should be in order on the playlist of when i did them hear all of those different attributes i didn't explain them all i didn't get to all of them but you'll hear the ones i did touch on now, if you've ever met that man, give that man P. Diddy's fame. Give that man P. Diddy money. And what would you have? If you met that man as, as a broke man or you met that man under 100K or between 100 and 100K and 500K or 500K and a million, give that man P. Diddy level of money, fame, notoriety, success, and access. And it was crazy in the press conference. One of the things that the man said, he was like, last year, I think he said, last year, P. Diddy was given a key to the city in New York City. And it came out earlier, I'm thinking it was earlier this year, that uh, T.D. Jakes was under a lot of scrutiny for being at T.D. Jake, being at P. Diddy parties. And then somebody came out, which I, I didn't know if it was AI or just one of them kind of made up type of situation. But they was talking about T.D. Jakes was a power bottom, which I'm guessing that's a terminology from the maybe the homosexual community and say he was a power bottom at the parties, which I don't I personally don't believe that. Like, I, I can't really 
see that man doing nothing that crazy going to the party showing face trying to you know look cool or, or fit in or what have you i could see that because whoever his tdj stylist is started dressing them in tight jeans and little jean denim vest and different little tight squeezing outfits and he, you know his body type started to change and he was kind of looking like he was on ozempic for ozempic was ozempic but he he went to losing weight but just not all the way around it just it looked like he was just losing weight in his legs which i didn't understand that part of it but you know to god be the glory god bless the soul keep your head up keep going and i think he he might have got his gap closed i can't remember but it just he started going through some changes and i think it was other pastors like a uh, mike todd and stuff like that that was putting pressure on a td jakes to like look younger dress cooler because maybe felt like he was losing some of the some of the steam or something but i don't really get get it but when you look at p diddy what did p diddy do just like the guy on the podcast dear future wifey who i said how the spirit of little ugly in him p diddy did the same thing he went and got around christians he went and got around these individuals now you take and you give these podcasters if these podcasters like y'all brought up to me anthony o'neill um the dear future wifey guy you got the young men on hardly initiated podcast they're not professing christians they do a lot of christian content that you will hope if the people they bringing around got the holy spirit in them that it'll start to rub off and they'll start to be inspired and they will abstain but i don't ever i don't know what how they live in their life but it's several podcasts that are doing christian content but the hosts are in fornication and that right there is a very of a is a much smaller version of the spirit of little ugly now take and look at men when you when you look at these men y'all gotta forgive them give them a wide birthday party set up it's not a surprise she know about it but she don't watch these videos anyway because she don't need them but when you take and you look at men who have a little bit of notoriety who can't even be abstinent until marriage and and christian men not professing christian men who can't be abstinent give them p give them p diddy money what you think gonna happen p diddy money p diddy fame p diddy access that he is the spirit of little ugly on steroids and if you look at it the traits that i talk about the same type of thing he come out get on videos he's he confessed that he's imperfect confessed that he's made mistakes confessed that he's a sinner right in your face but don't change he didn't had he did it i had decades to change his life he didn't did so much and got away with so much and then been looked at sideways so many times he didn't had so much time to change his life and then here in this last couple of years when he saw that he was about to get caught up guess what did he do just like the guy on the yellow couch went and teamed up with people who got a clean name he went and he got his head laid his head on the chest of td jakes and did a photo op so that people will look at him as a clean person did not get married and come out of fornication did not give his life to christ and start being a representative for christ and that's what i try to tell y'all about how the adversary works the adversary will give you keys to the city did it literally had keys to the city the adversary will give you millions of dollars millions of fans give you a huge platform people could look at did a situation and and if he said i want to thank god people be like oh god blessing him even though everything he does is secular even though he living in fornication people will start to really thank god blessing him and 
then what he's doing, and see, remember now, just like with Cassie, Cassie was in that situation with Diddy for a little while, but she had the spirit of little dummy on her. And then she came out later and then she wanted to sue and she wanted to get some money out of it, but was with him for countless years and reinforcing the behavior and doing all of the stuff and could have cried out a long time ago. But what happens is just like I told y'all with that spirit, a little ugly, what that spirit does is it puts a hedge of protection around itself. So, Diddy got these people scared. They got him just like the guy on from the dear future wife. Y'all come to me telling me he talking about he had some visions of doing some bad things to me. And then he telling me he used to be a shooter and a robber. And that's what Diddy was doing. Same thing. He got, they say this man had serial numbers scratched off of AR-15s in his bedroom. So if a woman see that, she like Cassie or whatever other woman, they trapped because they like, and then people kind of speculating that maybe he was the one that had Biggie killed. Maybe he was the one that had Tupac killed. These women done heard that stuff. Do you think he going to go and tell them? Absolutely not. Never. I'll never do that. Are you absolutely, are you crazy? Like, don't believe the rumors. See what, what a thing, what somebody with the spirit of little ugly will do. They will have people, they want people to think they dangerous. They want people to think they scary. They want people to think that because that, because that's going to hinder you from coming out and telling. And so what you got to see is, did it is the metastasized spirit a little ugly. He, he is the fermented, the reinforced, the elevated spirit a little ugly. And remember what I told you what the devil will do. The devil has no allegiance to you. He will give you all the money, all the fame. And when you get to the top, he will put a foot in your back and kick you off that mountaintop. He will let you go down in flame, just like Jeffrey Epstein. All of this money, all of this access, all of this stuff. And then what did he do? He killed himself because he didn't want to face the consequences for man. That demonic spirit will have you take your own life. It will have you take yourself out because it don't want to be publicly humiliated in front of the world to show that the demons have lost, that now you got to pay a price. It'll have you take your own life. But the thing about it is a lot of people who have this spirit, they are never repentant. They never really sorry. When they say sorry, they don't mean that they're sorry because they don't change their ways. Just like the men who claim to be Christian, they may come out and say they sorry. But OK, if you sorry, then stop sleeping with God's daughter. Stop fornicating. Stop talking about God to to pander to women and then get women in the bed. They doing the very thing that the secular world claim accuse me of doing. Men think that I share the message I share to sleep with women. But it's not a single woman outside of my wife on the face of this earth who could say she's sleeping with me. And that is the thing is these people with this spirit a little ugly on them, they hide in plain sight. They right there in your face and they will come and they will confess their sins, confess their flaws and call it transparency. But only so that you will dumb down, you will forgive them for what they doing that they know is clearly wrong so that they can continue to do it. They don't come out and say, you know, and, and like the Bible tell us that we shouldn't swear. We shouldn't make a promise. Because we don't have the power to change not one hair on our head from black to white. That let your yay be yay and your nay be yay, your nay be nay. So we don't actually need anybody to come out to the world and vow to abstinence if they claim to be a man of God. We don't need that. That's between you and God. But don't come out and tell us in our face that you live in, in opposition to God, but then keep talking about God. So what P. Diddy did, just like a lot of these rappers and a lot of these artists, they'll get up there and accept the award and say, I want to thank God. I want to give God all the glory. I want to thank my Lord and Savior. 
and they literally they have no fear of God. They will drag God right into their mess. And then so the lukewarm Christians and the babies in the Lord, they look up to a, somebody like P. Diddy who hanging out with T.D. Jakes. They'll look up to him and be like, oh, so I could keep listening to secular music and I could keep going to the club and I could keep partying because P. Diddy parties like none other. He also curse every now and then or a lot when he talking. He also works in a secular industry. He also got liquor brands and all this other stuff, but he hang out with the Bishop T.D. Jakes. And he give God the glory when he get an award or something happen. He say he thank God. But I'm not going to look into the death of Kim Porter. I ain't going to look into the death of P. Diddy. I, ain't gonna, I mean, the death of Tupac, the death of Biggie, the Kid Cudi car getting blown up. I ain't going to look into none of that because just because he said, I like to thank God for this right here or my Lord and Savior or or he came out and said he's imperfect and he's made a lot of mistakes, but he's working on himself. He changing. No, you, you could look in somebody's eyes and tell if they changing or not. You, you could just feel somebody's spirit and tell if they really doing the work to change, if they really want to change. You could look at just how they live in their life. Like you're going to start to see when somebody's spirit start to change. For the better, they skin going to start to change for the better. They weight going to start to change for the better. They Everything about them, they're going to start to have a different glow on them because everything affects everything. Somebody who is changing is not going to have bloodshot red eyes every day. Or even, even that, they use Visine. They use Visine. They, they're not going to keep. Their spirit not going to give you uh vibes. You, you're not going to feel that uh type of feeling from it. And, and let me take the word out, vibes, because some people take that too literally, and they think talking about something metaphysical and all of that, when what we're talking about with people with common sense is the perception. When you using your discernment and you looking at this person, what do you get from them? What does your spirit feel from their spirit? But some people get too caught up and try to find any little thing to hang their little hat on. And so this is what you see. So this is what happens. What happened with P. Diddy is this what the devil does. The devil will use you for its agenda, for his agenda. Because P. Diddy had y'all rocking the vote. He had y'all rocking the vote. He had y'all voting the dime. Had you doing all of that. And I think he was doing it for the Democrats. And I'm a Christian that. I ain't, I'm not in all that right there. I'm a Christian. I serve the Lord. I think he's with the Democrats. And then guess what? Democrats got in there and everybody voting for color and all of this got it right in there went to proving all kind of stuff that's against the holy bible all kind of stuff but maybe at that time that's what the devil agenda was maybe the devil agenda say hey let's get this rapper who already on my side the devil say let me get this rapper who already on my side who got all this influence and let me get him with this party that's fixing to start promoting and praising and pushing this here agenda so that families coming together but they can't reproduce because they're the same gender let's let, let's get that pushed out there let's and the bible says abomination so let's get this abomination to god really legalized authorized and promoted and pushed because i got this here this what the devil saying now he got this hill rapper who already in that lifestyle behind closed doors. Wearing the frame out of me and boot hole. It just got, they say they caught the man with, he, he had more uh, baby oil than Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson was trying to get a rebate from P. Diddy house. They had to go to Diddy house to stock up their shelves to get that baby oil Bike in the Walgreens and Rite Aid and, and CVS. They say that they say they ha, they caught this man with over a thousand bottles. They they confiscate over a thousand bottles of body oil, uh, baby oil, and lubricant. 
What in the world? And see, this is the thing. You can't quench lust. You got to starve it to death. You can't, when you feed lust, lust going to get bigger and stronger. You feeding a monster. You are feeding a monster. And that's how Pete did it, start to feed a monster. You, you notice a lot of Pete did it pictures, his head looked like an alien head. That spirit will literally start to contort you. The, your, your, the way your eyes look, the way your face look. Cause he a multi-millionaire. He would be standing there on a photo shoot with crud in the corner of his mouth. Got the little white stuff pooling up in the corner of his mouth. Mouth all dehydrated and dry. And just different little looks. And it's like, listen, you got too much money to be looking like that. Got too much money to have the same mouth set as a crackhead, as, as a homeless person. Like, man, let's put some chapstick on now. Do son lick that corner of that lip. Some now, nah. like, come on now, nah. you got too much money. But see, that's how that that demon start to take control. It start to change you, and then it it traps you up. So guess what? This demon get inside of a host, typically a man. There are some women with the spirit a little ugly. Most women have the spirit a little diamond on them. That's going to be complicit and approve of things and get into the sin and debauchery with the man. But these men go and get allies. If you notice it, did it went and got allies. Anybody who getting ready to take off, he went and did a song right, right before. What's his name? Nipsey Hustle on his album. I think did it is on his album saying a bunch of nothing. Ain't even saying nothing, but just made that connection to Nipsey Hussle. Then he all in pictures and all up on the meat mill. Then the, the young ladies, they get ready to take off out of Miami. What they, uh, city girls, he go and start dating one of them. Wasn't it one of them he was starting to date? He, that's what that spirit does. And on a smaller level, you notice the same thing with these podcasters that got the spirit a little ugly in them. They talking about God, they fornicating, but they go and create alliances with all of the mega pastors, all of the mid-sized pastors, all of the smaller pastors, all of the life coaches, all of the authors. They bring everybody with some influence onto their podcast and they create alliances and they make friends so that when they are playing in your face they got a million people that will sing their praises and say this guy is an amazing guy but see those of us who walking with the holy spirit don't feel the need to collaborate with people because we don't know what they are doing behind closed doors and we know that the word of god can stand on its own so we don't need partners and collaboration in all this big old team because we standing on the word of God. We don't need people to come out here and, and be able to sing our praises. We don't need that. But we have a good reputation with outsiders, meaning that there's no outsiders that's going to say we Tony Gaskins is cheating on his wife. Tony Gaskins is not living what he teaching. That's what the reputation is. Don't don't confuse when the Bible say when it's talking about the the, the pastor or what have you need to have a good reputation, which I'm not a pastor. And the, the guys who do what I do and they live in the right way typically are not pastors either. But we still want to have a good reputation. But it's a difference between your reputation and just somebody opinion. A skewed opinion. See, when your reputation is clean, meaning that can't nobody say you in fornication or adultery or you manipulating people and you stealing money or something like that. But see, these individuals, they go and get people who going to speak highly. So so you see P. Diddy, he go and he stand beside Jay-Z, stand beside Meek Mill, stand beside Kanye, stand beside Drake, stand beside Rick Ross, stand beside anybody else who making noise, who doing something. He tried to get them 
And then guess what? You could be coming up and making noise. Y'all got to forgive my mama 2G. So sometimes it go to iking up. You could be coming up and making noise. He'll go and get you so that now he got your silence. So what did P did it do? He went and got the breakfast club and got the breakfast club to be on revolt, trying to buy their allegiance, trying to buy their silence. Now, I seen they still spoke on his issues and all of that when the stuff came out. He went and got. I can't remember if it was EYL. Maybe it was EYL. He went and got on their stage and in, invested in their movement. I, I think they might have got put on revolt. And again, he wants all of the movement. He wants the people that's getting ready to take off. And he used, I remember Drake said at one time, he said, yeah, it was something about your idols become your rivals. And the guys who fell off want you to get them back to where they fell from. And, and what he was talking about is like guys like P. Diddy, who is still riding off of the credit, the line of credit that he had from 20 years ago. But will come today. And so you're going to see it happen in every industry. Think about it and, and understand this. It's kind of like. If a pastor is got the spirit a little ugly on him, but he a OG, a young righteous pastor could be coming up. That pastor will invite him to his church. So just like what I talked about with these pastors who divorced their wives, and they went before I could see them, before I knew that they was the type of men to divorce a stand up good woman to go get with a celebrity woman to increase their brand and their platform before I knew that about them because I'm coming up righteous and living right and doing the right thing. Those pastors align their brand with mine and they brought me into their church to speak because me coming to their church to speak is a stamp of who they are. Me speaking at their church is stamping that this, that I respect this man because I am willing to speak at his church. And then they go and they do what I would never do. They go and divorce their wife who has had their back and helped them build everything they got. And they go and get with a millionaire celebrity woman. And I would never do that. Never do that. If, if I allowed the devil to jump on my back, I still have the decency not to go remarry. I, if the, God forbid, but if something like that happened, I'm finna live like Apostle Paul. I would never remarry if I went through a divorce. I just wouldn't even have it in me to go do that again. It's just like, no, if I tried and gave it everything I could and fell, it ain't for me. I need to live like Apostle Paul. But that's what this spirit of little ugly will do. It wants association. It wants collaboration. It wants to be innocent by association. So it aligns itself with men who are actually living righteously. But see, there's a wool placed over the eyes of men who are living righteously. And that wool says, what that wool says is, Judge not so that you be not judged. And men who are not really all the way tapped in with the Lord, they think that judge not means that they can't use discernment. They think that judge not means that they have the power to sentence a man to heaven or hell but all that is is a warning that says as you judge you will be judged so it's not saying that it is a sin it's just saying understand 
that what goes around comes around, that what goes out is coming back. So make sure that you are above reproach if you want to hold somebody else accountable in a certain area. So in love and relationships and our sexual walk with God, meaning if we in fornication or not, if we in adultery or not, I'm going to make sure if I'm going to speak on somebody else's situation in that area, I'm going to make sure that I am above reproach in that area. And that's why I stay in certain lanes, because when it comes to money and finances, that's not my thing. Like, I don't get too deep into that. Like, I, I know that God clothed the lilies of the field and feed the fowls of the air. So I'm not really all that. Although I have stocks and although I have an IRA and all of that stuff, I don't get too wrapped up in it. So I'm not going to come out here and just be chastising and talking about how people are dealing with their money. It's been It's been times I like cars because I don't cheat on my wife. So I find other outlets like cars and I will just have me a car. I don't worship the car. I don't wash it every month. Don't wash it every two weeks. Don't wash it every week. I don't idolize the car. It is not idolatry. It's just another thing that I got that I collect. And it's different cars serve different purposes. So you'll see me in my Sprinter van when I'm at soccer practice or at a soccer game. Then you might see me in something that's fast and hear a little engine revving when I'm by myself and I'm shooting the video. But that's not a sin against God because I'm not idolizing it and worshiping it. And it's something that I, out of my spending money that I earn from doing business, treat myself to because it's not a sin against God. Well, see what these men will do with the spirit of little ugly they treat themselves to sin they treat themselves to fornication and they just continue to fornicate and fornicate and fornicate and get further and further away from god but the way that they hide in plain sight is by being in partnership in collaboration with men of god and the men of God are looking at it like, maybe I can reach this brother. Maybe I can teach this brother. Maybe I can help this brother. Not realizing that these men with the spirit of little ugly have no desire to change. Because they could have been changed. They could have changed just on their own willpower. They could, because there, there are men who are atheists and are abstinent. Because they believe in semen retention. And the benefits of semen retention. So they are abstaining for other reasons. That ain't got nothing to do with they walk with God. So how can a man who has the strength and the will of a man that God already gave us strength and a will just as being a male alone. But then with also the power of God at that at that point, a man should be able to do anything he put his mind to. So how are these men who claim to be of God? claiming to know God, claiming to be friends with bishops, can't get out of this sexual sin. But see, what P. Diddy did is when you worship money, when money becomes your God and you are feeding lust, it takes over. Same thing with R. Kelly. Same thing with Jeffrey Epstein. Same thing with Harvey Weinstein. Same thing with Bill Cosby. Same thing with Russell Simmons. When you worship money, and you don't have a fear and a reverence for God, and you feed lust, it will destroy you. And so what you have to realize, what here's what we're talking about. And this is, why, this is why I'm trying to help you understand how powerful sex is. Because everything that we're talking about with P. Diddy, they're not saying that he was, it's not about trafficking cocaine. It's not about money laundering. It's not about tax evasion. It's really all, it's really all stemming from sex sin. 
that he got into basically the largest thing is sex trafficking. And him holding people hostage against their will and him trafficking these sex workers across state lines basically is in trouble for sex trafficking. Fornication is, and this is the same thing that your podcasters and some of your pastors, some of your community leaders, some of the people, some of the men in your city that got a name. Some of your radio host, some of your television host, some of your Instagram live host and YouTube live host. This is the same sin that they getting caught up in, but they doing it at their level. So it's from woman to woman to woman to woman. Then some of them doing transvestites. They with transvestite, transvestite. Some of them with just men as well. Women, men, transvestites. Then what they doing is. As quiet as it's kept, they doing threesomes and foursomes. Your same podcasters got the money and the, the ability to pay porn stars and prostitutes $1,000 to come over to the house, and you'll never know it. Because if you are bold enough to be a quote-unquote man of God and be in fornication, you just one stone skip away from having threesomes and foursomes with prostitutes and transvestites. You in the same vein, you in the same lane, because if your spirit will talk about God and profess God, but then will live in willing sin, then it's nothing that you won't do. Because if you will play in the face of God, cannot hope, cannot put anything past you. And P. Diddy is the example of what these peon men would do with that amount of fame. And that is why a lot of these, and see, I'm tying this all in because it ain't just about P. Diddy. Like, he did what he did. He is disgusting. He, I believe he's demon-possessed. And I believe it would, it would be almost impossible for him to change. It, only, only Christ could do it, but... He too grown and old and musky. He already know about God. He already know. But see, the thing about it is the another thing that these men do, a way that they prove that to themselves that God is not real, is they will invite so-called men of God to environments that is not of God. And if you will compromise your stance with God and you will come to his party, I'm pretty sure Bishop Jace is not the only pastor that has shown up to a party. Maybe Carl Lentz hadn't been there. Maybe some other smaller pastors we don't know. Maybe other just men of God have been there. Men who are like publicly professing Christianity have been to the parties. And so that's what the spirit want to do. And, and the women with the Jezebel spirit, with, which is similar to this little ugly spirit, and the women with sometimes the spirit of a little dummy on them, they want to, it's a lot of beautiful women that hire me for coaching and they'll come and follow me. They'll DM me a random question. There, It's a lot of women that DM me like just random stuff. But what some of these women are doing is they're trying to get in vicinity. They're trying to see, okay, if I throw the alley, ooh, will he slam it home? Because what, what these women with the spirits on them know they know that if a man is not really walking right with God, if she shows up in his DM, he's going to shoot his shot. He's going to build a connection and then eventually shoot his shot and try to sleep with her. So that's why a lot of these women DM me and pretend to be just sending me information, sending me videos. It's some women, it's, it's a, some women that they, they pure and genuine in their approach and what they're trying to do. I might be young enough to be their grandson or their son and it's someone. But then it's other women that I assume that I know that if I started to build a rapport with and build conversation with and get close enough to that, they will be open to me shooting a shot. And that's why I always tell people and I always say to women, don't DM me. If it's not something for my business, if it's not something for my ministry, don't DM me. If you need to talk to me, you got to book a coaching session so that it is a business transaction. 
because it has to be something to where it's either we're doing business because if it ain't business that mean it's personal and i don't do personal with any woman outside of my wife and i keep those boundaries and it's women that have told me i'm mean and all of that well you can sometimes if that's what it looked like that's what it looked like but i got to be because you never know who that spirit is working in and trying to use and so that's what these men will do as well with that spirit a little ugly they get around these so-called men of god and so i'm guaranteeing you just like the guy from the podcast dear future wifey when he get on the phone with me he used the n-word in a derogatory vulgar way to see and it really was a test to see if i use the n-word too if i would return and call him the n-word and say the n-word because that's a that's just a gate check just checking to see if the gate is locked just checking to see when i went around the pastor i went around the pastor who he has not said my name and he don't try me so i ain't gonna say his name because i'm i'm giving him space and grace to grow and to change as a man he said the n-word and he said the n-word in the house of the lord in a curse word type of way and at the end of the day it's a derogatory term yes it's not the f word but we know how we use that as black people and we know where it is and isn't appropriate and how it should and should not be used so i did not expect the pastor to say that in word and then i think him or another one said the h word but out of context not talking about hell in the sense of satan's house but just saying it like h naw and stuff like that and so they do that to test to see and i've had men of god tell me that hey man it's okay to curse like hey bro don't feel like you got to be a certain way around me and i'm like and i have to tell them i'm i'm not acting for you and i, I don't act i said bro this is me i don't use profanity i don't curse like i don't converse about women and lusting and i, I don't cheat on my wife like what you see from me online is who i really am in real life and anybody who know me probably caleb curl have been the closest around me and went around the you know country with me and some guys that went out of the country with me they'll tell you that i don't cheat on my wife i don't go and shoot my shot and flirt with women i don't use any profanity whatsoever what you see online is who i am and th these men you know they're not in the public eye and all that so they're not they don't feel the need or they don't want to seem like a do boy so they don't come out and speak to that it, and that's crazy how that works right men will know that you live what you preach and they won't say a word about it online like they won't say hey this guy right here really is who he is but the demon the spirit of little ugly will actually go get men of god to speak highly of them publicly so the men who are living in fornication living in willing sin or living in adultery actually get more public stamps and praise than men who are living righteously that right there ought to let you know something because that's how the devil works. the devil want to get reviews get google reviews and reviews and praise reports for his host when i say host i'm saying h-o-s-t meaning the host is the man that the demon is living within and using his body and his mouth and his influence and his platform to do the damage to the body of christ so when you what what they talk about social proof social proof reviews so the goal of this of, of the devil is to get his minions his host to get them associated and to get them approved and see i did not know and we talking about this p diddy thing but p diddy is like the umbrella but it's a lot of men up under p diddy like that's got the same spirit and doing it on their level but i did not know why god why my spirit never sat right 
because I, I did not know that Anthony O'Neill would get in the pulpit and say that he is not abstaining. I didn't know he would go that far. Like, if anything, I expected him that if he in fornication to like plead the fifth and just be like, you know, if asked that question, hey, are you a man, of, you as a man of God, are you practicing abstinence? I would expect the answer to be like, if he's not to say, I'm talking to God daily and praying and crying out for the strength to walk up right and to live a righteous lifestyle in every way of the word. Like just, I am seeking the face of God, but not just a bold no. And, and that's how the spirit of little ugly will do. It will have false transparency, but the false transparency is to distract and to disarm. It disarms you because it says you can't, throw stones at me because I don't confess my sin to your face so that I can continue to sin. So you can't condemn me. You can't unfollow me. You can't speak negatively of me. But Anthony O'Neill had asked me three, four or five times to do a tour with him and do events with him. And, and it has been for years, even before he blew up on his uh, podcast and I always just, I always had hesitation. I always said no. Or like, bro, let me think about it, bro. Let me get back to you. And I realized now that it was the Holy Spirit saying, hey, you can't take a man who is not married and who is not committed to abstinence in front of all of your women supporters. Like you will be introducing a wolf into this the the grounds that I've called you to oversee and to protect because if just one of God's daughters gets slept with God will leave the 99 to go look for the one as Jesus talked about in the parable of leaving the 99 sheep to go get the one that falls into the ditch because God cares about every single soul. So even if a man who claims to be a man of God is just sleeping with one woman, that's her soul condemned to hell. If the rapture were to come right now and she living in an unrepentant state of fornication with this man, that's her soul that could be on the line. We, we don't know for sure because we don't get to say God is the ultimate judge, but all we could go by is the word. And if you living in unrepentant sin, that means you separated from God, even if you still carry the title of Christian. And so as you notice, what P. Diddy started trying to do is he started trying to get around Christians and talk about God. He started trying to soften the blow. But see, the thing about it is, is in the eyes of the court of law, they don't care nothing about T.D. Jakes. They don't respect mega pastors. They think it's a sham. They see it as a money grab. And if if the court of the law, the people in the court, the judge or whoever actually read their Bible, then they're going to see that a lot of T.D. Jakes doctrine and a lot of these mega pastors doctrine ain't even in the Bible. Like it, like they twisting and changing the word and just using big words so that you confused and you feel like they anointed and that they deep and that all of this right here, just because what they saying, you don't even understand it. And so that's, that's another part of this. And that's, that's right there. So when he started trying to do that, people was like, he was like, okay, you hanging with you hanging with Bishop T.D. Jakes, but we don't respect him. Like, we don't see him like that. That's just his members that go in that church that is idolizing him and put him on a pedestal. But outside of that church, he another man. He just another man. And so it, it didn't really do a whole lot, but it did something. But that's the soft and the blow. 
And so what you got to realize is this, this right here that's moving, it starts with just fornication, fornication with one person. And then you feed it, you feed it. And then it's fornication with two people, three people, four people, five people, 12 people in a year. And then it's two people at one time. And then it's with the same gender who dress like the opposite gender. Then it'll be with the same gender who dress like the same gender. And it'll be with the ones who are flamboyant. Same, your same sex and dress just like the same sex. Now, I ain't trying to, it's not a man who dressed like a woman, but he might be flamboyant. Then it'll be with the man who is seen as masculine. Like the guy, uh, Stevie J, who got muscles and act tough and look like he could have been a gangster, a dope boy, tried to get in with 50 Cent, who, who really seemed to be like he could have been about that life. But then also what happened is this spirit, it'll, it'll get around different people. So it'll get around gangsters. It'll get around pastors. It'll get around nuns. It'll get around virgins. And see, that's how the, the, the distraction, the distraction and the deception, just like when the podcaster was in the pulpit and the, the podcast called Track Stars, they, they did a review of what, and the title said, I can't believe Anthony O'Neill said this out loud, but he on the stage and he saw, and he said, I know virgins that's going to hell. When I guarantee you, he don't know a single virgin that's going to hell. Because if he know a virgin that's going to hell, I know a virgin that's going to hell. And I don't know no virgin that's going to hell. Because I don't not know adult virgin. Because anybody who are adult and a virgin, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're a Christian. It, it, you really don't. But he said that to word salad to deflect, to distract. And guess what happened? When he said that, the podcaster, the other podcaster bust out laughing. It was nothing funny. I'm watching it. And I'm like, I'm kind of like, where was the joke at? But see, everybody who living in sin, they had, they, they was tense. Like they was all tense. Like they, because they were like, whoa, man, you bringing this demon up here and you finna expose all of us, man. All of us got this same demon that, that's confessing the love of the Lord, but we living in fornication, man. Is you really saying this out loud? And so when he said, I know virgin that's going to hell, everybody exhale. They were waiting to exhale. They exhale. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. That was a good one. Woo, that was a good one. I'm glad you, I'm glad you deflected. Well, I'm glad you put that on that virgin. So now let's all picture this virgin who is pleasing unto God. And let's picture this, this pleasing unto God virgin being cast into hell. But let's picture you who is not pleasing unto God and who is admitting that you're not pleasing unto God. Let's picture you going into the pearly gates, but let's picture the virgin going to hell. Come on now. So this is the same spirit that's in P. Diddy that will want, will want us to look at him as a philanthropist, as an amazing father, as a friend to Christians, as a Christian, but just as, as a mogul, as a great businessman, an astute businessman, a shrewd businessman who know how to do business to ignore and overlook the filthy lucre, the lasciviousness, the sexual immorality, the, the acts of abomination unto God, to get us to overlook all of that and just see the good. And then have the wool pulled over our eyes that says, don't judge me. Don't judge me because I came out and I said and I confess that I'm not a perfect person. It's like, uh, you're going to need to express a little more than that. They're not going to need a little more. We're going to need a little more than that. They're not. 
And that's what it was. And guess what? Listen, I have to speak on this stuff. And I, I got family members who are homosexual. I got mentees, people who have known me my whole life almost. People who come to me for, for help and support, like coaching, who live a life that is not walking with the Lord. And I show them the love of Christ. Like right now, I just got a text from a young lady that's from my hometown. And she is in a lesbian relationship. And they know my message. They, they know my message. But I have to speak on it, but I still show the love of Christ. I don't condone their lifestyle. I don't approve of their lifestyle, but I let them know. And they see by my actions. So a lot of times people don't understand that. Now, I'm not going to promote the lifestyle. I'm not going to condone the lifestyle. But I'm going to show love to the person. Because I know Jesus loved everybody. So he could love the person and hate the sin. So I could love the person and despise the sin and recognize and realize this sin. Now that don't mean I'm going to hang out with these people. I'm not going to hang out. I'm not finna have my wife hanging around lesbian women and just all kiki kin. Cause I know how emotions work and how the spirit will work. I'm not finna go hang out with gay men. I'm not hanging out with fornicating men. I'm not hanging out with adulterating men. I'm not hanging out with gossiping and backbiting and covetous men. When people are living contrary to the word of God, we instructed to come out from among them. It's not that we can't help them. It's not that we can't show love. It's not that we can't be a light in darkness. But you're not supposed to be partaking in and condoning and reinforcing. And so that's what a lot of these individuals end up doing. So it's kind of like, if I heard about the Diddy party, and, I, and as a Christian man, I got invited to the Diddy party, and I heard what's going down there, I ain't going to the party. Because now, like the pastor said, my presence sanctions the environment. And that's why that demon will invite somebody with a good reputation and with a good name, with a righteous name to sanction the environment. That's why these men who are plucking off these women based on their following that they have built from their podcast are inviting men and women of God because those men and women of God sanctions the environment. It sanctions the podcast and it says this podcast or this radio show or this TV show is a positive space. See, and somebody said, well, Tony, you went on podcast. I don't go on podcast once I realize what they are doing, but I'm also not a pastor. I am a speaker, I am a life coach, but I'm not a pastor. I'm not an overseer of a body of Christ. Some may call me a minister, I don't call myself that. So we're not the same. I don't have the same prerequisites that a pastor has to have. I may be seen as a teacher, but I'm not a bishop, an overseer, a pastor. So when I go on to a podcast, it is specifically for one reason, and that is to reach that audience. But if I go on that podcast and I realize, and it and the Holy Spirit shows me the motives and the intentions of this podcast is not pure, then I'm never going again. I ain't going again. Once I realize the motives and the intentions aren't pure, and that is to just get money or get fame, I ain't going. It's to have a good look, I ain't going. So now I've been turning down podcast interviews every day because I don't have the time to look and see who's who. 
I ain't got the time to just give it to watching hours and hours of all these different podcasts that's in, asking me to come on. So it's just no. Everybody who email in, they can attest to. Some of them, if they're watching this video, they can put in the comments, yes, I asked Tony to come on my podcast last week or two weeks ago or a month ago. And I got a response that said, Mr. Gaskins is not accepting interview requests. If you don't believe me, then send your podcast in. The only time I'm going to do a podcast at this point is if I know the person personally, it's a client. It's under a special circumstance. Like it's a client, somebody I know personally It's somebody that they they not in a position to be a wolf. Like if, if it's a woman, then she frowned upon if she going out and giving away her body to all the men or women in her audience. So I could look at her and tell that she just want a voice. But she ain't trying to go sleep with her viewers or supporters because that give her who want to be seen as a significant and classy and respectable woman. That will give her a terrible, atrocious name because women don't get the same grace that men get. Now, let's let and be honest about that right there. Now, if a woman came and said she a woman of God and then she came out and say she fornicating. Everybody be ready to stone her. And that's why Jesus had to stand next to that woman and say, let he who without sin cast the first stone. They ready to stone a woman. These men will sit up in the pulpit and tell you they fornicating and keep all their millions of followers. Keep all their millions of views, keep all their millions of followers. The same grace won't be extended to a woman, though. So I have to look if I'm if I'm going to go do a podcast today, it got to be a married man. If it's a man, if it's a woman, the message got to be holistic and it got to be uplifting. I, I ain't going on a park unless I'm going and on an assignment. To bring some stability or to bring some accountability. So there are podcasts that they have a direct intention to destroy the minds and work for the devil. And I done reached out to some of them podcasts like, hey, I want to come on the show. Give a real perspective. Perspective of a whole healthy man. And I get no response. And that let me know, okay, it ain't that this these toxic, nasty conversations just come up and they address it. It's that this is their goal. This is what they want to do. Like these women have a Jezebel spirit on them and they want to. And so what the Jezebel women do now is they'll build a podcast platform so that they could get men to give them a free meal. They literally getting a free steak dinner every night because of the men who follow their podcast. That's what the Jezebel will do. They get in a rent paid. They get in new bags. They get new clothes. They not even doing it for the sex. Now they might give out some sex, the Jezebel, but it, it ain't because they want the sex. They want the money. They want the bills paid. That's what they want. Now see the men, they don't want their bills paid. They don't want the woman money. They want her allegiance. They want her silence. They want to make her think he a good man. He's an innocent man of God who just struggles with the area of fornication because of how sexy she is. They will put it on that woman and how sexy she is, how beautiful she is, and that they just can't help themselves and they will rather fall in sin with her than any other woman. Or they will rather just be in sin with one person instead of being in sin with prostitutes or strippers or 10 or 20 different everyday women just one woman and they will try to make that woman feel privileged and make that woman feel like she is his safe space and make that woman feel like she is actually bringing him closer to god and helping him stay right because he's just sleeping with her and not two or three or not different people or multiple people that's what he'll try to make her feel but and because the the spirit of little ugly that demonic spirit births or breathes the spirit of little dummy, the spirit of little dummy will then come on that woman to keep that man filled up and keep him in sin, keep him full of lust to keep him in sin so that his message is not effective and fervent in the body to keep him. And so 
Lil Ugly will actually find a co-host. He is the host of the demonic spirit that has him talking about God and representing God as a Christian, but living in opposition to God's word intentionally and willingly, but will find a co-host, a woman or a man with the spirit of little dummy on them so that they could stay in sin. And the goal of the adversary is to keep these powerful men and women who could be powerful in the body of Christ, who could really shift things and bring change it is to keep them in sin in sex sin sexual immorality so that god's true grace and true favor and blessings is not upon them and the adversary will give them the things of the world the things that man can get the adversary will give them the bentley and the benzes or the Lamborghini to show off to their audience and to put that out there because that's really what they heart desire. That's really what they want. Y'all give me a second. Okay. My wife by her birthday. Okay, so we good. We good. Y'all forgive my wife text me, so I had to get this. So understand this right here. This this thing go go deeper. One one of the guys came over here under the under the guise of a woman's name and was like, "Oh, you really stretching this out? You really stretching this out? Thank you." They said that I I said, "Shut up, little dummy," or something like that and blocked them. And guess what? Just for that, the series going another week or two. Just for that, if you it, it the wrong thing to do when somebody is working with the Holy Spirit is to let us see that the demon on his heels, that the demon is uncomfortable. When the demon shut up and leave its host. So the host can repent and live for God, then that's the work is done. Because see, none of what I do is for clout. This is for the work of the Lord. That's why you notice I don't put people face in the thumbnail. Because I ain't trying to grab nobody's attention. This is for me to help be a protector, a siren a sounding board for the people that God has in my audience, in my support group. I ain't trying to reach everybody. I ain't trying to get the attention of everybody because see, those of us that's in the body, we're going to struggle enough as is. So I'm trying to reach the people who want to live right who want to do right, who want to be better. Because there's some people who are in the body and they claiming to be in the body, but they ain't trying to come out of sin. They're not trying to keep the commandments. They just want to keep the title of Christian because they feel like if they can pluck out of the body of Christ, that they sin will be safer. So what they saying is, if they could sleep with a woman who claims to be a Christian, she most likely is not going to have an STD because she's not sleeping with a bunch of men. But if they just go out and sleep with a woman who does not claim God, don't know God, don't care nothing about God, they fear that they probably are going to get exposed or they're going to 
get exposed to an STD. So the reason why this demon uses these men to sleep with the daughters of God is because they have a covering. Notice that we have not heard from the women who are fornicating with these men, these pastors and podcasters and police officers and principals and politicians. Notice that we have not heard from these women, that these women have not come out and done a video and say, hey, I am the woman that is in fornication with such and such. That's strategic. See, what got the guy, Derek Jackson, what got him exposed is he dealt with women who not women of God, women in the church. And they came out and told on them. They came out and, and they exposed them. So guess what? These other men with the same spirit that he had in him, that he got in him probably still, God forbid, hopefully repent and change. But the same spirit he had in him is the same spirit that's in some of these other influencers and podcasters and individuals that's in fornication, but they done learned. Oh, don't mess with these, don't mess with these two dollar ripped up Michael Kor bag women. Don't mess with these women who the, the, the tip of their heel done, done came off and, and they galloping now because one heel full and the other heel half. Don't mess with them women because them women uh, uh, go over there to that to the blogger and shout her tell their whole story over there on the gossip blog now. So don't mess with them. Get you Get you a woman who claimed to be a Christian because she's going to be riddled with guilt. Get you a woman who got a brand. Get you a woman who got a following. Get you a woman who maybe her mama or her daddy is a pastor or a bishop or a celebrity. Get you a woman who you're going to have silence from because she embarrassed. Because she don't want nobody to know that she is in sex sin. So she's going to cover you in your sex sin because she also covering herself, but both of y'all is exposed to God. And both of y'all going to pay a price. Because you because you being a mockery unto God, and it's a price to pay. And and see, the thing about this here, with, with what is received in the body. See, the thing about it is. This, this thing is spiritual. This thing is spiritual. And and the spiritual could lead to the physical. And this is what you got to this is what you got to realize. In Hebrews 2 and 2, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense or reward. See, we're gonna have a your actions have a reward or it's going to have a consequence and that's what a lot of times people don't understand so really when you look at when you look at sex sin what what is a std think about it that's your that's really that's your reward that's your recompense in your body for your sex sin, because all the STD is, is bacteria mixing. So two people could be clean and have a bacteria form from that, that semen being left, that whatever out of woman being on, because STD start from metastasizing in the body. Cause it ain't like they went and they got it off the wall. It ain't like it just was dropped, dropped down from heaven. That's that bacteria mixing. 
So when that bacteria mixes and it go to fighting and warring with each other and it go to metastasizing, it go to metabolizing, it go to fermenting, now, next thing you know, you got syphilis. Next thing you know, you got herpes. Next thing you know, you got HIV. So guess what? When these, when you sitting here and you living in fornication, you living in sex sin, can you imagine the amount of STD he did in the hand? We really don't know if he don't got HIV or AIDS. We really don't know. You don't know. But look how... Look how he kept wanting to fulfill that lust. Look at the extent that that lust went to. Look at how far it went to just have. And, and then see, this is the thing. He, he get celebrities. He got the singer. He got the rapper. He, he would deal with celebrities because you get in silence because they got a brand. They don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to admit what they were willing to do. They don't want to talk about it. So you got silence. And this what you got to this what you got to realize. Now, when, when Cassie did what she did and she did the lawsuit, we don't know if it was her idea. I kind of doubt it was her idea just because I have coached and dealt with so many women who have no desire to tell. Like I have coached women who have been the mistress of very, very high profile men and they refuse to tell because they don't want their name and their face and their likeness to be in the media. So they come to me to talk about it. And to get it off they trip they chest, and then they trust me, like they use me as like a sounding board and somebody they could talk to, but they have no desire to write a book, no desire to tell the gossip blog. And for some of them, I just don't be knowing because I'm like, why would you come to me and lie about sleeping with this particular guy? Some of them I don't even be believing it, and then I'll say, Well. You know, how do I know? They will send me a picture. They'll send me a picture. They'll send me an item. Just like, boom, just right off of their, off of the, off of the guy's business, off of his line or off of a product that he owns or, or that he has just boom, send it right to me. How can I get that right there? How can I have that exclusive if I'm not in close quarters with this guy? And I'm like, okay. So this was this what the thing is. A lot of times people think when I be talking about this stuff, they, they put me in the same position as other people on YouTube, not realizing I'm an actual celebrity life coach. I'm an actual celebrity matchmaker. Like I do this in real life. So when I'm speaking, Nine out of 10 times, I'm speaking with more evidence and more insight than I can share here online. I have client confidentiality, confidentiality. I can't come and be a gossip blogger and expose everything because people are coming to me to confide and to get feedback and to get a strategy and a plan of action on how they can break this soul tie, leave this situation and move on, move forward and be better in their life and not fall in that spirit of little dummy in the future. So I can't come and tell everything. And that's why, that's why the smart men, if they hear their name on my channel, they don't say nothing. It's the guys with the spirit of little ugly and little dummy that want to say something instead of just repenting and walking different, they want to say something. And that's the ones that's going to end up getting exposed because when they go to puffing their chest out and they go to acting defiant, that's going to disturb and upset the women that they done skeeted off in. And the women going to eventually say, oh, you're not even remorseful for misleading people in the body of Christ. You're not. Oh, you arrogant about this. Oh, you staunch in your stance of 
blasphemy or fornication or misguidance in the body. And they will then be emboldened by the Holy Spirit to bring accountability, to expose these men because they won't humble themselves and truly repent. And that's what happens. See, a lot of people don't realize is that it's exposing people is not the goal of God. Repentance is the goal of God. But see, when you take grace for granted, the grace is no longer granted. And that's what we see P. Diddy going through. He abused grace for decades. Epstein abused grace. Weinstein abused grace. Bill Cosby abused grace. R. Kelly abused grace. Russell Simmons abused grace. And then they got exposed. See, all of us are imperfect. We all do stupid stuff as men. We all have made bad choices, but you have grace. The reason why you don't know everything that I've done in my life is because of grace. And the reason why it's not all being plastered and coming out and all these people speaking up and saying, hey, Tony was doing this when he was a drug dealer. Tony was doing this when he was an organized pimp. Tony was doing this when he used to have that gun in his lap 21 hours a day. Tony, because they have seen my repentance they've seen me change and they see the work that i'm doing so what i try to get these men to understand is when you get called out don't get mad scratch your booty and get glad wash your booty and get glad when you get called out sit down humble yourself repent and shut up because if you stay in arrogance like P. Diddy did, you're going to get the same outcome that P. Diddy getting just on your level. So what P. Diddy is and is, is an example of an unrepentant heart, an example of arrogance running rampant. It's an example of debauchery and filthy lucre and lasciviousness being unchecked. It is an example of enablers because I believe if T.D. Jakes really have the Holy Spirit on him and is really walking with the Lord, that the Holy Spirit would have had the power to, to help P. Diddy change his life. And that's why I question that. Because, and my dad, he said this to me when I was a child, when I was young. He said, son, he said, if you got on a clean white suit and your friend got on a, a dirty suit and y'all tangle up, y'all go to tussling, is your clean white suit going to rub off on his dirty suit or is his dirty suit going to rub off on your clean white suit? I said, man. But now, if I don't get the, if I don't get too tangled up, if I if I don't go to really hanging out with him, if if I ain't brushing shoulders with him, I could sit and talk to him and say, "Hey, man, you ought to go get cleaned up. You ought to go put that suit in the cleaners and get that suit clean. Then and and take you a shower. Then come back with a clean suit and a clean body. And now." Let's let let's go ahead and, and hang out. Now now we can you know go out to dinner. Now we can go out here and we can be a light. We could be a representative. But if I start going to his parties, and I'm hanging out at his parties, if I start dressing like him, they, the the stylist the stylist had TD Jace on the stage with belly button showing. He up there on the stage doing his little wiggle dance and belly button showing. I mean, had an undershirt on, look like tucked in, tucked into the pants, and I'm like, "Who is the stylist? Who is the stylist?" It was like as soon as the bishop went to hang with P. Diddy, he started looking like a lollipop, skinny leg jeans with the with the ripples on the knee, with the ruffles on the knee. I'm like, "Who is the stylist?" I'm like, "Hold on now, no, I, I don't want to see a sixty year old dressing like a twenty year old, dressed like a sixty year old." Put you on a loose-legged suit 
with pinstripes and dress your age. You don't have to put on no leather jacket with flared collar with skinny leg jeans. No, that them clothes got a spirit on it when you put them on at that age. But see, that was the clean suit hanging and tussling, brushing shoulders with the dirty suit. So see, what happens is you have men of God, they get around these false Christians, these fake Christians who podcasting or got radio shows, and they start to minimize and decrease their standards. They start to lower their standards. They start to using the N-word in a derogatory way. They start to using the H-word in a out-of-context way. They start to drop in a little A word, little D word. They start to do a little too much. They start to look at booty and comment on the booty and talk about they lust. They, they start to get comfortable with this spirit, with these demonic spirits that is posing in the body. And so this is what you see. So here, here P. Diddy is, who is a complete agent of the devil working 100% for the dark side, but yet bringing down people who are supposed to be a light. There are now hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of people. Everybody outside of the Potter's House Dallas is looking at T.D. Jakes with a side eye because of P. Diddy. It was almost like if you ever had any type of concern like, is this man truly a man of God? It almost confirmed in your spirit. It, it, it It's just a bad look. And that's what it'll do when you go to hanging around, spending time. It's one thing to be a refuge. It's one thing to be a light. And then you be a refuge and you be a light. And then you start to see those people go out and make changes. You start to see those people start to change and you're like, oh, I'm glad that he or she went and sat with this person. And so I've had the fire clients who came to me for a PR stunt, but not to actually hear and grow. I had the fire clients and I, and I learned this too a long time ago when I wrote my book, what daddy never told his little girl. When I republished it one time, I went into... Okay, let me look at this now. My investor wrote me say he he want to invest in something. Let me look in this here now. Look look at the favor of the Lord. While I'm here doing Lord work, money coming in. Investor say I could put up the funds for this here product. Look. Listen now, back to what I was saying. I took the book, and I was a married man. I'm a married man. I wrote the book, What Daddy Never Told His Little Girl. I republished it with this little side publisher. Man probably was stealing money. And I went to the club. And I did a book launch. I probably was 23, 24, something like that. Did a book launch in the club. My homeboy came out. And guess what? I was selling the book for $15. Some time later, I got an email. Now, I didn't do anything in the club. I wasn't drinking no alcohol. I wasn't grinding on no women. I wasn't doing nothing. My wife was in there. But we literally went in there as let's get this game because these are the women that's leaving this club and getting tricked out their draws, getting put on their bike. Let's get these, this game to the people who need it the most. And it was sometime later I got a, a message on MySpace or something like that, me and my MySpace from a young lady and said, your book changed my life. I never thought that I would purchase a book in the club, but I thank you for having the boldness to come and do that. See, when you when you are covered by God, when you are in a sense, when, when God taken, he will give you the strength to go, it's kind of like, that's why the men, these podcasters and these men who was in fornication, that's why they could never have my calling because they can't even stay out of fornication 
as a single man. So they could never be in a place of confidence with the most beautiful women in the world like I am. But I'm in that place with Victoria Secret models, with dignitaries from around the world, with models who get paid four, five million a year, with supermodels coming to me for life coaching because God knows now that he can trust me because when I sinned and when I fell into sin, I fell on my face and repented. And I got up and I apologized to the people that I sinned with. And I come out of fornication and I went into righteousness and I have stayed on this path. So God say, listen, there are men and women who need help. And they live in a compromised lifestyle. But they got the money, the looks, the name, the fame, the access, the opportunity to be a force in the kingdom. But I can't send them to such and such podcaster for mentorship or such and such pastor for mentorship because they have not bridled their loins. They have not consecrated their spirit so they can't be trusted because they can't even take care of their own self right now. So I got to send them the you and people, my soldiers, my frontliners like you, men and women, who can go into that space and deal with this person who got a half a million dollars that they want to invest into a powerful project. And I know you're not going to scam them out their money. Or they got this brand and this following and they trying to get their life clean and they trying to go the right way. And they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And I know you're not going to try to sleep with her. You're not going to try to derail her. And see, that's what the Lord will do. He'll, he will elevate you after he separates you and consecrates you. That's why I don't do collaborations like that. That's why you don't see me collabing with everybody because you got to be separated before you elevate it. If you notice, before God used anybody, before he elevated anybody, he separated them. He took them into the wilderness. Or he took them into the mountaintop and they had to sit just them and the Lord. They had to be separated, consecrated, and then elevated. See, what these men doing out here that want to stay in fornication, all they focus on is collaboration. All they focus on is always being surrounded by people, always being with people, always doing tours, always doing events, always doing this. And that keeps the access coming. That feeds the demon. That feeds that spirit of lust. It feeds it. But you got to be separated. You got to come out and let God deal with you. Let God talk to you. Let God birth a movement. Let God birth a ministry. Let God birth a message. Let God birth a book through you. Not through your innocence by association. Not through your guilt by association. Not by your complicit supporters. Not by your enablers who are aiding and abetting your fornication or your adultery or your lasciviousness and filthy lucre and debauchery. But go to people who are going to tell you the truth and who are going to hold you accountable. Go to those people. And they don't want that. They go to the people that they could sense a little bit of a bisexual spirit in or a little bit. Yeah, I would say bisexual because a lot of these men that they that these men go to is bisexual. They 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 effeminate. They go to people that they feel their spirit is is compromised. They go to people that they feel and they kind of look and see like, okay, yeah, this this guy he'll look like he was he was not him growing up, and now he wanna he wanna be him. He wanna get muscles now, or he wanna get you know, try to look good now or try to be suave now. He want to dress to the nines now. Like now he, now he don't forgot who he was and now he operating his insecurity and took over and he love and basking in this hill light. Let me go to him. They're not going to come to those of us who is not chasing fame and fortune. They're not going to come to those of us who 
we just the bare essence. We ain't using the thumbnail pictures. We ain't using the description box. We're not using the keyword tags. We're not editing up stuff. We ain't editing videos. We ain't doing intros and outros. They're not going to come to us because they because they know what you see is what you get. And it's going to be real raw and uncut over there. Let me go over here to what people trying to polish and they trying to show a highlight reel instead of what's real. They trying to show the highlight reel to get people who is comparing their highlight reel to their behind the scenes to feel inferior to them because of the level of production that they got on their videos or their messaging. Let me go over here to them. Because I see they they are in the art of smoke and mirrors. They in the art of packaging. They in the art of disseminating lies and imagery. But they they not uncut. They, they, they not real and raw. These men that I be speaking on, a lot of these men that I be speaking on got my phone number. And I still got to speak on it. I told my co-host Caleb, I said, boy, listen, you fall, I'm adding you. I'm on here talking bad about you. I'm on here, well, Caleb done fell. It's the end of the Louder Than Words podcast. Caleb done fell. God bless him. We're going to lift him up. We're going to pray for him. But I got to go on about my business. And I, I told him, I, I let everybody know, listen, I'm not your friend. I work for God. I'm not, and, and when I say friend, I don't mean that I'm not a friend, meaning that I'm not your enabler. I'm not your covering. I'm not, I'm not finna lie for you. I'm not finna tell people you a great person. I'm not finna not speak on you just because I got your phone number and we done talked on the phone before. No. Any and everybody can get served with the word of God, including myself. If I fall into sin, I'm going to expose myself and shut it down and go be ministered to by somebody who is living above reproach. You're not going to see me on here on YouTube running my mouth, on no podcast running my mouth. I'm going to have to seek the face of the Lord. But you know why? I'm humbled by God. So therefore, I talk to the Lord daily. Soon as I wake up now, and I had got away from reading my Bible consistently. As soon as I wake up now, I'm hey, word, turn that word on. Somebody say, Tony, what app is that? It's called the Bible app. It's literally called it, the, the app is named Bible, and it looked like a brownish maroon. Let me make sure I ain't got no calls coming up. Let me just make sure. Here, what we got? Okay, 4 p.m. So I want you to realize and understand this thing is these spirits is moving out here and they're dangerous. But if you notice the gateway, the gateway is sex. Because because let me ask you this. Who have you met that have offered you cocaine? Who have you met that have offered you financial fraud? Who have you met that have offered you ecstasy pill? But who have you met that have tried to get you in fornication or adultery? Tried to get you in masturbation and pornography? See, the gateway right now, the gateway right now is through sexual immorality. Pornography is sexual immorality. Masturbation is sexual immorality. See, the goal of the adversary is to minimize. So the adversary will have these podcasts. Like I seen Anthony O'Neill promote a podcast of women that was on a couch. And y'all got to forgive my Wi-Fi acting up. It be acting up in here sometimes. And the women were on the couch. 
and they were promoting masturbation. They were telling women that you should be touching yourself, that you need to get to know yourself. But can we really be real about that? Like, how does that benefit your life? Does touching yourself help you be a better executive director of your nonprofit organization working with teenage girls? Does touching yourself help you make more money? Does touching yourself make you smarter? Does touching yourself make you more righteous? Somebody, a little Jezebel tried to come in the comments last week talking about, Tony, it's not masturbation. A woman touching herself is not as taboo as you trying to make it. It should be taboo. Because you altering the chemistry of your body and you manipulating the touch of your body so that when you get a husband, he's not going to be able to please you because his ain't. His hand is not coming from the angle of your hand. He does not have your body part, so he won't know how to stimulate it and treat it the way that you have stimulated and treated it. So you will have frustration and resentment towards your husband because he can't please you the way you have learned how to please yourself because you live with you 24 hours a day when he living with a totally different body part 24 hours a day. So now where where the brain is the largest sexual organ and if you have real love then the intimacy will be pleasing now that's no longer true because you have learned how to touch yourself and now it's not about a human connection now it's not about human chemistry now it's not about love and affection so where your body would have responded and had a great release and a great experience with your husband that's no longer because now you have manipulated the process. Now you have maligned the process. Now by you lusting in your mind or watching pornography, because a Christian woman told me she masturbated, and I said, well, how do you do that? She said, I, I turn on some porn. Oh, this what we dealing with. See, and this the thing. See, this the thing. This is the thing. They want to say, old bobblehead men want to say, I grieve the Holy Spirit. Because I be calling names. Say, I grieve the Holy Spirit. But how is that grieving the Holy Spirit? Me bringing accountability to the body. But turning on porn and masturbating or lusting in your mind and masturbating, not grieving the Holy Spirit. What do you think, Christian woman? What do you think the Holy Spirit does? If the Holy Spirit lives within you, what do you think the Holy Spirit does when you turn on porn? I'm going to let you picture it. It's a Holy Spirit. It is a spirit. If you have to personify it and, and, and picture it like that of like, what you think the Holy Spirit is doing when you turn on porn? What you think the Holy Spirit is doing when you envisioning whatever size male member body part you want or the man that you your celebrity crush or the man you crushing on at church or when you envisioning that and you doing what you doing what you think the holy spirit is doing and then when you done with that do you think the holy spirit just come right back you see what i'm saying so see the the, the calling is a high calling that's why we have to press for the mark of the high calling. It's not intended to be easy. The walk is not intended to be just peaches and cream. You have to consecrate your mind and your body. You have to renew your mind, your spirit. You have to come out from among them. 
you have to be separated, then consecrated before you can be elevated by God. You can be elevated by the devil and God have nothing to do with what you got going on. The devil has principalities. The devil has power. Read your Bible. It will tell you all about the power the devil got on this earth. Just because you have a promotion, a position, a raise, a podcast, a platform, fans, supporters, followers, don't mean that God is a part of what you're doing. Look at all the money that P. Diddy made. He tried to get bail, $50 million bail, which means he would have had to pay $5 million to get out. And he had all these cosigners on the thing and also put his house up for collateral. The house valued at $48 million. Look at what the devil did. $48 million house. We, we sitting over here, those of us who walk in and living for the Lord to the best of our ability with all humility and service and righteousness. We like, Lord, we seen what the devil did for P. Diddy. Is you a Lord? Uh, is any of that? Is any of that uh, for, for the body? We're trying to we're trying to figure out, Lord, I'm asking for a friend. No, because that ain't what our focus is. We're not a prosperity pastor that ain't what our focus is our focus is righteousness and let the byproducts of righteousness be the byproducts of righteousness let it be what it's gonna be but see the lord right now he calling us into a, a space of boldness a space of no fear see the bible even say that god has not given us the spirit of fear do you know that it's very nerve-wracking for me to call names like it it's not comfortable. I don't do it with pride and joy. It's not something that I want to do. I don't want to shine a light on what's going on. But what the Lord is telling me, he's showing me is like, listen, because of your consecration, because of your separation from sin, you have a higher level of discernment. So you're going to see things that the average general population is not going to see. And it is your duty to express it. It's your duty because their blood is on your hand. If you see the deception of Satan and you don't speak on it. So guess what? I'm about to become the number one most hated. They're going to want to put physical hands on me. Now, I'm going to let you know, if somebody tried to put physical hands on me, Jesus say turn the other cheek. Y'all keep me lifted. Y'all keep me in prayer. Y'all keep me in prayer. Y'all keep me in prayer. And, and hopefully since y'all forgive these fornicating and adulterating men of God, hopefully y'all will forgive me when I beat living brakes off somebody who just had the notion that they were going to put hands on me. Hopefully because God used Moses, who killed somebody. Hopefully, the Lord will continue to use me. But it's I'm about to become number one most hated because I'm calling out the sin in the body. See, that's why I try to tell people, like, I really didn't want to speak on Pete Diddy because he's not in the body of Christ. Like, he don't, he doesn't claim to be a true man of God. So, it's like, what, what the devil do? I really not worried about what the devil do with the devil. Like, I really don't get caught up in that. But I want to speak on it because that is the spirit that that is a demonic spirit that's in P. Diddy that used P. Diddy. And that same spirit, a version of that same spirit is using men inside of the body of Christ. And they doing the same thing that P. Diddy did. They just doing it on their level. So it's men inside of the body of Christ who is having orgies and threesomes and foursomes and 
dealing with men, sleeping with men, sleeping with men inside of the body of Christ. There, there's a lot of churches with there's churches now with homosexual pastors. It's a lot of churches with homosexual choir directors, homosexual piano players, homosexual drummers, like the same spirit that's in P. Diddy that had him in all that debauchery is all up and in and throughout the churches across the world. So it's going to get called out. And, and it, it's, it's shocking to me a little bit. Like I, I, I get kind of shocked how, deceived the body people in the body could be i get i get kind of shocked and i'm just like man this is kind of it's kind of crazy to me like how I, like i don't understand like how can somebody play in your face like how how can you watch the podcast or the youtube or the instagram of somebody who is claiming to be one thing and living another life. Like, I, I just don't understand that. I, I'm a lot of times I'm so confused. Like, how can somebody who did all this talk about love and relationships and then cheat on a wife still have millions of followers? It just goes to show you how dumbed down we are, how the spirit of little dummy is on millions of people. Like, how do people get a podcast and they claim to be Christians? And they get mad at Christians calling out Christians. And they think that Christians calling out Christians is about building a brand and making money. No, it's about accountability in the body. If money is made, that's because it's in a marketplace. That's because YouTube has to make money. YouTube sent out an email that said, whether you monetize your videos or not, we putting ads on them because this is our stuff and you using our stuff you using our resources so the bible say muzzle not the mouth of the ox that treads the field so if somebody is doing work and they giving time from their family and it's in a a system a marketplace where they're going to put ads on your videos anyways then we deserve to be compensated but that's not the goal because you could get the same compensation from doing a cooking channel, doing a prank channel. So, but we as Christians is calling out so-called Christians to let the babies in the Lord know, hey, this is not how a Christian behaves. A Christian does not behave with arrogance in a sense of coming out and saying, yes, I'm a Christian and yes, I'm in willing sin and yes, I'm going to stay in willing sin. That's not how a Christian is supposed to behave to the babies in the Lord. That's not Christianity. Do not, do not be confused. That is deception, demonic deception. That's not Christianity. That's not how we get down. Christianity is about being a humble servant of God, being a repentant man or woman of God. It's about admitting, acknowledging your faults, and then going and sinning no more, turning away from that willing debauchery that's what christianity is it's about repentance and you repent through grace and you give in grace but when you have arrogance to say that you are christian and you know god but you're gonna keep fornicating or having your orgies and your threesomes foursomes and all of that and then when you arrogant like p diddy you go around men supposed men of god and then you continue to make a mockery of god because you hanging out with supposed men and women of God, but then you go on and steal in your fornication, your fornicating lifestyle and still having your debaucherous parties. But yet then you leaving that party and then you going back up under to sit next to and take photos with supposed men and women of God. Now you plan. Now you plan with the Lord. Now you plan with the Lord. And guess what? When the devil is done with you, Because everything that go up must come down. So uh, it's just the laws of gravity. But we also apply that to life. Now, see, God can sustain you. God will give you longevity. God will put you in position and you will be left in position. And then your children's 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 children will even be blessed from the work that you did. You will have Abraham type favor. 
when God is in the place. But when when you doing the work of the devil, meaning you living in willing sin like fornication, but you claiming to be a man or woman of God, you living in idolatry or you living in covetousness or you living in you worshiping money. All you focus on is making money. Then. God ain't got nothing to do with you and the devil only going to use you as long as you useful. So when enough Christians start to wake up and realize that you are fraud and they start to unsubscribe and unfollow and stop listening and stop giving views, then the devil say, oh, uh, it, this this host is no longer useful because this he cannot deceive the children of God anymore. He now he just got all of my reprobates. He got all my reprobates. He got all my my, my little dummies. He got all my little uglies. So. It, at that point, the devil saying he just working against himself. He, the, the the body of Christ and left because of the messengers of the Lord have sound have ring the alarms. So everybody done left. So now they like okay. So now they 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 like, well, let's go ahead and destroy them. And that's what the devil did to Einstein. That's uh, not Einstein. Epstein, Weinstein, Bill Cosby, R. Kelly. Now, P. Diddy. Russell Simmons got a little bit of it, but not as bad as P. Diddy. That's how he he took off. Russell Simmons got up out of here, went to Bali. <laughs> hey, up out of here. Well, y'all try to break a case, getting up out of here. We go over here, cross these legs, and sit down and do this here. He hit little chant mints. Got up out of there. And see, so guess what? That's what I'm trying to tell these pastors that's living in fornication, homosexuality, deceit, lies, manipulation, all of this. These pastors, these podcasters, these police officers, these principals, these politicians, everybody who's saying the name of God and claim to be a Christian, you living in willing sin. You in unrepentant sin, you diving into sin, you jumping hurdles to get into sin. Your days are numbered. You working for the devil. And the body of Christ is finding out. You about to be weakened and then you about to be leveled to ashes proverbially in your business. You are going to lose it all. If you do not humble yourself and repent and live righteously, stop arguing with the word of God. Stop trying to make excuses. Stop trying to be the victim. Stop trying to hide in plain sight. Stop getting mad at those of us who are holding y'all accountable. Scratch your booty and get glad. Man up or woman up, humble yourself, repent, and walk upright before God. Be a shining light for the kingdom. Renew your heart. Renew your mind. Consecrate. See, that demon that is that you're allowing to keep you in fornication or adultery or whatever is what's making you mad at the voices of accountability you got to sit down and talk to god and say lord remove anything from me i rebuke satan in the name of jesus lord remove any evil spirit up out of me and help me to humble myself and hear that all i'm all that's coming for me is accountability help me to see the heart of these men and women that's out here that don't have my phone number or don't have my respect or don't have my ear but yet trying to make videos and TikToks and all of this to sound the alarm to get me to see the error in my ways and to change. Lord, help me to humble myself and to walk righteously, to come out of sin and to be a true light and shining example for you in the kingdom. Hey, this is Tony Gaskins. Uh, if this is a premiere, I don't know if it is or not. God bless you. Thank you to the moderators. God bless you. 
and to the supporters to the new blessed tribe members thank you so much i can't remember what what youtube said it was up it was up a certain amount of percentage with new members god bless you welcome to the blessed tribe and to my supporters that have invested in the channel the link is in the description lord willing if it's not it's in another one but thank you for your support check it out look at the deadline in case that you didn't do everything you wanted to do at, at the level you wanted to do it look at it and again this is an investment this not a donation this not a fundraiser and it's a one-time thing it's not a monthly thing but you will be in partnership with me for the life of the channel so for the rest of my life and so check it out read all about it look at the deadline read form c and then join us if you will if you don't want to god bless you don't want you to only want those who want to that's why i don't try to coerce or twist nobody arm or make no promises of the amount of return and all of that it just if it's for you it's for you if it ain't it ain't god bless you. keep your head up keep going and to those of y'all who is over here watching and if you know i'm talking about you okay i just seen about that and you know i'm talking about you whether you got whether you in a church with 10 members or whether you got a platform with 10 million know that this is coming from love and i'm trying to spare your life help you get your name right humble yourself repent and walk righteously we all can do it with the power of god with the holy spirit we can be above reproach we can come out of sin and we could be a light for christ if i know if i could do it i know you could do it humble yourself and repent and allow the lord to use you and work through you even if it's just for your closest friends and family to see you as an example of righteous living god bless you we'll talk soon